How's it going guys? My name is Zach and welcome to my game recap for the Montreal Canadiens versus the Chicago Blackhawks. Now sadly I didn't get to watch this game as I was out with a couple of friends uh, but after watching the game recap and gathering some information from the, uh, the box score and whatnot I've put together this recap and my thoughts on the game. The first period, it was a really even first period uh, with a couple of chances coming from both sides but in particular, two really good chances on Montreal side. One coming from the stick of Shaw, and one coming from the stick of Ben, with Crawford coming up huge, making a couple really awesome saves, denying Montreal of a couple really good chances. Shots after the first period were really even. They were the most even they were throughout the entire game, going period by period, with the shots 13-11 to in favor of the Montreal Canadiens. Once again, I feel like uh, the Canadians really tried their best offensively, and trying your best is just not good enough. Uh, we needed to get more high-volume chances from better angles, and I feel like the chances we had just weren't on the right stick. Uh, ben came in with a beauty chance, tried to lift the puck up over the shoulder of Crawford, but couldn't get it up high enough. Uh, Crawford made an awesome save on him. Uh, ben had a great chance, but had that been on the stick of somebody else, I feel like that might have been a goal. Uh, but obviously, looking back, Ben was in the right spot, had a good chance, and Crawford just came up huge. Chicago didn't really get as many chances, I feel, in the first period. Price made a couple of saves, obviously, with 11 shots on net. A couple decent ones, but nothing that really stood out to me is too, too dangerous. Uh, Price played solid, but Crawford played better. Uh, the Montreal Canadiens could have easily came out of that period one up, uh, but Crawford kept it at an even slate. The second period wasn't so fortunate for the Montreal Canadiens with just one minute and 13 seconds into the game, Paul Byron comes in on a really good break and lifts the puck up over the shoulder of Corey Crawford, ringing it off the crossbar. A beauty shot, a beauty opportunity, beat Crawford clean, but rung it off the post. I heard it from my house. That's how absolutely devastating that crossbar ring was. It was a heartbreaker. The Hawks reply just two minutes after with Dylan Strome carrying the puck into the zone, takes his time, looks for an open man, and finds a wide open Connor Murphy right out front of the net, who takes his time, kicks the puck up up to his stick, and rifles home the first goal of the game. It was just a shocking display of defense by Montreal. They didn't mark the man. They had two guys coming in straight through the center of the ice. Nobody on either of them. Connor Murphy gets the puck thrown right to his stick on a beautiful play from Dylan Strome, who used his vision really well. Found the open man, and we just gave him way too much time with it. Price got over. Couldn't quite make the save. It was a moving uh, moving chance for uh, for Price, but um, it really just it was a beautiful shot. Uh, not a whole lot Price could do on that. Montreal just needs to be on that man. You can't give them time in the center of the ice like that. Uh, way too high of a quality chance, and they rifled it home. A little while later, Price showed that he as well is a goaltender in the game, making an awesome save right out front of the net on Sakara that was thrown in from the point, I believe, uh, great save from Price. Uh, definitely could have been a goal. It was an awesome save. And surprisingly enough, the Montreal Canadiens' power play actually didn't look that bad. We got a couple really good chances right in front of Crawford. Crawford's positioning was on point. Made a couple awesome saves on us. We were moving the puck around. We were getting shots generated on the power play, which we don't take enough of. That's my biggest gripe with the Montreal power plays. We don't shoot the puck enough. But we were shooting. The chances were being denied by Crawford, who was playing out of his mind. And uh, again, a, a different day, a different uh, different goalie, and you know, a couple of those pucks might have slid by, uh, but Crawford was playing out of his mind, way too good positioning, and uh, stoned us a couple times on our power play. And with just eight minutes left in the second period, my play of the game happened. Uh, puck was shot in by Victor Mete, and Corey Crawford makes a save. The puck bounces out in front of him. In flying comes Lekkinen with a good shot. He just absolutely got robbed. Crawford with the big swoop glove save got flashed in the leather on him and uh, absolutely robbed him. My play of the game, Corey Crawford, awesome save. Absolutely robbed us from a goal. Uh, eight minutes left in the second period. And uh, it, was, it was a breathtaker, that's for sure. It was an awesome save. Um, and, and it was just a chance taken away. Uh, from the Habs, who definitely could have been up at this point. I mean, between the crossbar ring and that chance, a couple other chances in front of that, the Habs could have had two or three goals if Crawford wasn't playing out of his mind. The third period rolls around, and the game follows suit. The Montreal Canadiens looking awesome offensively, creating chances, using our speed throughout the neutral zone, but 
in the defensive zone. We're just looking sluggish and flat foot, and that ended up uh, costing us again with the second goal of the game coming in the third period. Just five minutes into the third period, the Hawks are holding offensive zone control, and the puck starts up at the point uh, on the stick of Slater Cuckoo, who sends it down low to Alex Debrincat, who very quickly, bang, bang, boom, finds uh, Brandon Pierlini wide open out front of the net, who hammers home the one-timer pass Price. Price didn't really stand a chance on it. He slid across, tried to get the glove up, but couldn't get it up fast enough as Brandon Pierlini got an awesome one-timer on that just flew past Price. Defensively, we just can't let that stuff happen. I mean, they just, they were letting players control the offensive zone. We weren't getting the guys out front of the net. They kept getting those uh, one-timers and awesome slot chances on us, and the Habs just defensively were not in position, weren't keeping an eye on who's in front of the net. We had a whole bunch of mar unmarked guys all over the place, and it ended up costing us for the second and final goal of the game, again, coming from the stick of Brandon Pierlini. Pretty much other than that, other than uh, Price making a pretty nice save, uh, we absolutely nailed the crossbar again with Lekkonen coming in on a nice break, rung it off the crossbar. Nothing else really happened. Uh, a couple shots, a couple chances. We actually had a ton of shots at the end of the third period. Not too high of the quality, but um, again, every shot has a chance to go in, and we were peppering them at the end of the period, but it just wasn't enough to beat Crawford, who stopped 48 out of 48 shots with his 25th NHL shutout of his career. Now for my thoughts and final wrap-up of the game. Uh, once again, I feel like the Montreal Canadiens outperformed the Blackhawks offensively. I feel like we, we definitely had a higher volume of scoring opportunities. Crawford just way outperformed it himself and uh, really took the Blackhawks to another level in this game, uh, sending us away with a sh getting shut out. And we really should not have gotten shut out that game. With the amount of chances we had, the amount of quality chances that we had, we should have been able to put one home. But Crawford stood on his head, had the magic feet going, kicking away pucks left, right, and center from out front of the net. And we just didn't have enough in the tank to uh, to get it past. And we couldn't get into his head. He was playing his game, and he was on point for the entire game. To me, on the Montreal Canadiens, Shea Weber really stood out as an underperforming player for me. Uh, he blew a tire on the blue line in the third period, giving a wide-open 2-on-0 chance that just really shouldn't happen and I think on a normal day would never have happened. Uh, the puck came back to Shea Weber, he was handling it, lost his footing, left the puck at the blue line and sent them in on a wide on 2 on 0 that Price actually made a pretty nice save on. Um, other than that, he got embarrassed a couple times, getting uh, getting blown by one by Sod, and another one, uh, it was a really nice move around the right side boards that Shea Weber just never stood a chance on. He wasn't getting up in the play. He wasn't moving his feet, he got caught, caught flat foot, and I know he's not the fastest guy in the world, but he's normally better at that positioning and pushing players out wide, but players were able to beat him, get around him, and kind of embarrass him at this game. Now to defend Shea Weber a little bit, I feel like he's playing through an injury. Uh, in the last game, he actually fell awkwardly on his knee, and it looked to, uh, to twist a little bit. Uh, he favored it a little bit, but didn't go out of the game, and I feel like he's playing uh, injured on that knee. So that could explain why he's playing so flat foot, why he isn't being able to move his feet as much. But if you're playing, you should be playing at uh, at your peak and uh, you should be healthy. And if you're not, then you shouldn't play. S uh, simple as, if you're out there, I'm going to treat you just like any other player. Uh, I know what Shea Weber can do and I just didn't see it from him this game. And it was a big disappointment and I think that was part of the issue with the defensive struggles in the game. Uh, nothing that directly came from him goal-wise, uh, but definitely gave up a couple opportunities that they shouldn't have, and Price had to uh, make a couple really awesome saves to bail him out. Now, it's no surprise my player of the game is going to be going to Corey Crawford. He stood on his head, absolutely won the game for him this game, I believe. Uh, 48 saves, uh, got his uh, 25th shutout, as I mentioned before, and uh, he just looked awesome. His control, his uh, vision, it was all on point. He was always in front of the puck. He knew where the puck was. And uh, you just couldn't you couldn't slide a dime past him. So uh, hats off to Corey Crawford, who played awesome that game. Um, and it was just a, a bit of a disappointment for the Montreal Canadiens. And to wrap it all up, I think it's time for the, the crunch time. It should have been crunch time last game, and it should have been crunch time the game before that. But it is now that we need to realize if we're making it to the postseason, it is now. We don't have games to waste. We should have won the last game. We didn't. We had a chance. We were in it right till the end. A little bonehead move by Brett Kulak. 
kind of threw that one away. And this game was definitely winnable. Uh, I think it was just in, in the cards for the Montreal Canadiens not to be able to come away with a win for this one. But we really need to capitalize on games like that, that we are definitely uh, able to contend with. The, the teams that we can skate with and that we can perform with, we need to take those wins. The Chicago Blackhawks, they've been on fire recently, but in general, not the greatest team this year. Those are teams that we need to take wins against. So when we play against the harder teams, we're not so pinched for points. I don't want to come down to the last four games playing against Winnipeg, Nashville, Tampa, and Toronto, uh, having to come away with two or three wins in that to try to make it to the postseason. Nonetheless, that is about it for this recap. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed watching. Please take a second, like this video, subscribe, and turn on the bell for post notifications so you get notified every time I post. And I hope you have a great day. Have a good one. Thanks for watching.